Okay, <clears throat> welcome back. So now we move to the third hypothesis related to information processing, and that is the noticing hypothesis. And that's um, just like its title says, this is about noticing. To notice means to be aware of something um, after paying attention and focusing. The hypothesis was developed by Richard Schmidt in the 1990s, that is more more recent than the ones before and it was largely influenced by information processing as we said before and uh, Schmidt introduced the concept of intake so what do we mean by intake in order to understand the concept of the noticing hypothesis we should be able to differentiate between input intake and output so what do we mean by each the noticing hypothesis stipulates that input refers to the language that the learner is exposed to. Okay, it's any um, input the learner is receiving. However, intake is that part of the input that the learner actually notices and pays attention to, notices and takes in to their mind. Okay, so sometimes you might be receiving language input however you do not notice what is happening that is related to phonology or morphology or syntax etc so when the learner notices the input they are receiving this is called intake uh, memorize it this way it's like taking information in and finally we have the output which we talked about before which is whatever the learner produces whether orally or written According to Schmidt, the noticing hypothesis states that what learners notice in the input is what becomes the intake. And noticing does not itself result in acquisition. So here, Schmidt was not explaining acquisition, but he was explaining the starting point of acquisition. This is why all of these hypotheses we are talking about are actually related to each other. Therefore, we start with noticing and then we move to other things um, like interaction and later output, etc. Therefore, from the noticing hypothesis, L2 learners do not begin to acquire a language until they become fully aware and conscious of the input so that it becomes intake. According to Schmidt, there are a lot of factors that lead to noticing. So the question here is, do learners always notice language features? And the answer is no. In order to be able to notice, students should go under these conditions or pass through these factors uh, which affect noticing. Frequency, that is how many times is that linguistic feature uh, is repeated. Perceptual salience, that is how salient, how clear or noticeable the linguistic feature is. To be able to be perceived perceptual comes from perceived that is noticed and um, uh, engaging uh, the mind of the learner three instructional strategies followed by the teacher individual processing ability is that person able to process and notice readiness to notice um, is the learner motivated enough are they ready to notice and finally task demands you know that when it comes to language classes, um, we have different tasks and each task has um, a certain target that the learners have, uh, learner has to accomplish. And based on this, um, we, we could know if the learner will notice the linguistic features or the rules. Okay. According to the noticing hypothesis, um, Schmidt discussed two types of learning, implicit and explicit. And if you remember from Krashen's monitor model, one of his hypotheses was the acquisition learning hypothesis in which he distinguished between subconscious automatic acquisition and conscious learning. And this is kind of similar of what we have here in the noticing hypothesis. Implicit learning is any learning that happens without awareness that is subconscious. Okay, and it eventually leads 
to implicit knowledge. It's the knowledge of L2 that underlies learner's performance, but of which he or she is not directly aware. They know these words, they know these pronunciations, these grammatical features. However, they're not aware that they know them, like they did not notice in order to get them. And then we have explicit learning, which um, needs attention, needs a lot of focus, and it becomes explicit knowledge. I know the rule of the vocabulary, a grammar, a sentence structure, etc. And I'm fully aware of what is happening here. And this is what sometimes distinguishes um, native learners of a language and non-native learners. Where uh, sometimes um, we as English uh, learners, as a uh, learning uh, English as a second or a foreign language, we know certain grammatical rules more than Americans or English people themselves know or are aware of. Why? Because their knowledge is implicit, however, our knowledge is explicit. And this case of implicit learning and implicit knowledge actually happens with second language learners, as we said a lot before, when it's automatic, when it happens in a natural way. Okay, this is the model of um, proposed by Schmidt. So we have input happening, okay, and instruction at the same time. The student has to do some noticing, and if the student notices um, the linguistic features, they will move to the working memory. And by these arrows, we mean practicing and rehearsal, which gets us to the long term memory. And um, during this practice or rehearsal, output should be happening, producing the language. Okay, let's move to the final hypothesis of our lesson, which is input processing. Remember um, this by relating it to our information processing. Again, when we say information processing, we're talking about attention, memory, and finally uh, processing. Remember the model how when we pay attention, uh, the, uh, whatever we have moves to the short-term memory. Once we practice it, it moves to the long-term memory. And when it moves to the long-term memory, it is uh, language is acquired. Now we're talking about input processing, how the learner processes uh, the input that is received. So this was uh, proposed by Bill Van Patten in the 1990s, 2000s, more recent and again influenced by IP and Van Patten proposed a certain distinguishing between form and meaning and this is the basic thing we will see here. It is also a very short hypothesis and direct to the point. According to Van Patten, um, it is a model of how learners make form meaning connections. When we talk about form miss, we are talking about language features, lang linguistic rules, etc. So, it is a model of what happens during comprehension, that is, during input, that may subsequently affect or interact with other processes. Therefore, according to Van Patten, um, this model was based on certain assumptions, certain beliefs, of course, based on observations, etc. Number one, learners have limited processing capacity when and cannot pay attention to form and meaning at the same time. This is the important point here, that as a learner, if they are engaged in input, that is they are listening or, or um, reading in order to uh, understand, in order to find meaning, they have limited ability in their minds to pay attention to both form and meaning. And now, while, while you are listening to me in this video, you are focusing on meaning. Are you able to focus on form? For the past 9 minutes 30 seconds, were you focusing or paying attention to the structures? Have you been paying attention to my pronunciation, to the words I'm using? Have you been paying attention to any linguistic features? I don't think so. 
you must have been paying attention to meaning you want to make meaning and you want to make to understand what i'm talking about so to focus on both form and meaning is kind of difficult for learners another thing is that learners tend to give priority to meaning yes we want to understand and this is the the, the basic um aim of language and of input we want to understand so we don't focus on form unless we decide to pay attention and it does not happen automatically that learners focus on both so when the context in which they hear a sentence helps them make sense of it they do not notice details related to language form that is to grammatical rules etc and this explains why um, a lot of um, learners learn the language in an immersion context for 17 20 years they receive input all the time however they still do errors in language forms and structures that is because they haven't been uh, paying attention to form during the uh, process of acquiring the language all right um so ip suggests a number of ways in which learners go about processing so it explains um, what happens there are two principles that van patten talked about number one it is the primary of content words remember content words are lexical words not functional words and learners process content words before anything else that is let's look at the following example the cat is sleeping a learner of english will notice cat and sleep and he will un he or she will understand that the cat is is sleeping However, they will not focus on the function words like the is before cat, is is here, and then I add ing. If the purpose is meaning, they would just focus on content words and understand what the sentence means. Another principle is that the first noun uh, is what is noticed by learners first, and the first noun is considered the subject. That is, learners often look at the first noun in a sentence and just assume that, okay, this is the subject. Example, in a Spanish sentence like Lo detesta Maria, which actually means Maria hates him, uh, an English speaker might incorrectly think that um, <laughs> Lo is he, detesta hates, and Maria is the object here, because Lo came in the beginning, so it's the first noun, and the first noun is the subject. However, this is incorrect and low is misinterpreted as the subject. So Van Patten gave these two principles as examples of processes that happen during second language acquisition. All right, so this um, gives a model of where input processing fits in an acquisition scheme. According, okay, so we have input and input um, involves other processes then the learner um, these processes help us build the learner grammar okay internal grammar or inter interlanguage so input processing comes here to explain what is happening before other processes happen in the mind in order to produce language okay this is it we are done with our chapter. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you paid attention to all the information.